Fred, you next. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. How difficult is it to imagine these two without each other after the Harry Potter story ended? Hey guys, welcome back to another video and thank you so much for the support this month as the channel received a record number of views, which means the world to me. So, in today's video, I want to talk about how George Weasley coped following the loss of his brother Fred and how it changed his life going forward. Now, as many of you already know, the Weasley twins were inseparable for the entirety of their lives and I don't think anyone could have thought that we'd lose either of them. I'm all for a shock death in a story, but this really knocked me when I read of the moment Fred was taken. As I said briefly, I want to discuss what exactly happened to George after his brother's death and the steps he took to at least try to live a fulfilling life for him and for his brother's sake. Let's continue the video. Before the video begins, I'd just like to highlight for those of you who may want to check out my personal life, which does include Harry Potter stuff, that I do have an Instagram where I post lots of photos that you can view. It's also the best way to contact me if you have a question or even a video idea. I may not reply immediately, but I'll try my best to get back to you all. You can check it out from the link in the description below. Enjoy the video. Welcome back guys, so I've mentioned in the intro of the video that I don't think anyone's seen Fred's death coming and it really shook the Harry Potter community when we first read of it. Even now, over 10 years later, it still probably is my least favourite death out of them all. I can't lie. Not that I had a favourite death, but hopefully you all get what I mean. I don't think anyone actually liked any death in Harry Potter, except maybe for Bellatrix the Strange. That was pretty sweet and all the other bad guys that were killed. Anyway, I don't think it takes a genius to realise that Fred and George were inseparable, basically from birth. They had done everything together and although they were individual, it's kinda easier to look at them as one person or one unit. Basically, you wouldn't find Fred without George and vice versa. They were so similar in so many ways. Most importantly, they shared ambition. It takes a lot to start your own business. A lot of people would have at least had a third level education in order to learn the skills necessary to prepare for such a challenge. Now that's not to say it is 100% required. Many people have started businesses without, but the point I'm making is Fred and George quit school to pursue their dream of owning their very own joke shop. They have enough belief in each other to make it a success even if many would be doubtful of them at the beginning. When things took a turn following the Dark Lord's return, the brothers both joined the Order of the Phoenix, putting their lives at risk in an attempt to combat Voldemort and the Death Eaters. Now, the reason I'm highlighting their experiences together is to show exactly that, their togetherness, their bond. So, as I've said, they joined the Order and survived several skirmishes. The penultimate battle at Hogwarts, however, was Fred's final moment in the book, which reads as follows. And Percy was shaking his brother, and Ron was kneeling beside them, and Fred's eyes stared without seeing, the ghost of his last laugh still etched upon his face. I don't really think George knew how to feel at that moment. I don't think he really knew how to process what had happened, and the truth is, I don't think he ever did. I don't believe he'd ever imagine a life without his brother. I don't believe Ron, Ginny, Percy, Bill or Charlie imagined that either. They never dealt with such a pain. The mother Molly, on the other hand, knew all too well what it was like to lose someone she loved. Her brothers and former Order of the Phoenix members, Fabian and Gideon Pruitt, both fought during the First Wizarding War. They were ambushed and killed by a group of Death Eaters led by Anthony Dolohov, which left Molly devastated. It was something that stuck with her. So she goes from losing her two brothers in the first Wizarding War to now losing her son in the continuation of said war over 15 years later. Honestly, I don't know how she found the strength to keep going because not many people in Molly's position could recover from such a loss. Fortunately for the mother, she had a big family around her who all shared her grief. And I also think that plays a part into how quickly Molly leaped to Ginny's defense when Bellatrix tries to kill her. There was no way she was losing any more of her family to this war. Now, that's Molly. But George was a different story. 
Don't get me wrong, it's not a competition for who's more hurt, that's not the angle I'm going for and I hope you all don't think that either, it's just a completely different perspective for him. If you view the relationship of the twins the same way I do, then you'll know that George's life changed forever, he really was never the same again. He didn't laugh the same way, he enjoyed humour still, but it just didn't have the same effect it did when he was with Fred. His personality also changed. Now he didn't become a boring old prude who sat around sulking on a daily basis, no that certainly was not it, he just changed. He also considered whether to continue running the joke shop without his partner, but in the end I think he knew that Fred would have wanted him to continue. As a matter of fact, I don't think there was anything he would have stopped doing on Fred's account. He probably embraced the things they used to do together, or even perhaps tried to incorporate someone new into old practices. Keeping his brother's memory alive was important. He was more than happy to welcome Ron on board after the latter retired for being an Auror and together the brothers turned Weasley Wizard Wheezes into an even bigger success than it originally was. George also went on to marry Angelina Johnson, who coincidentally was close friends with Fred and even attended the Yule Ball with him, so it was quite a fitting result for the two to end up together, and they named their firstborn son Fred after his uncle. I think it was nicely done on JK's behalf. I've also always wondered what George would see when he looked into the mirror of Erised. I planned on making a separate video, but I thought it was best to include it in this one. So I'm sitting there thinking of how it could happen. I'm doing a little research, putting some ideas together, until I came across a piece written by a fan, and although I'm not the biggest supporter of fan fiction, I was genuinely captivated by this piece I came across, written by a person called Edward Lim. It reads as follows. George peered into the seemingly normal mirror curiously again. He was confused. Why were there two of him? In the mirror stood two identical teens, one smiling while the other stared. The other's eyes were sunken and dark circles enveloped them. His mouth was turned down in a perpetual frown and worry lines creased his face. He seemed to have aged years. As George looked on, he realised that only one of them had two ears. He gasped quietly. He looked behind him, but there was no one there. Tears streaming down his eyes, he reached a tentative hand forward and touched the cold, smooth glass of the mirror. As if expecting Fred to disappear, like a wisp of smoke, he didn't. Instead, he smiled and reached his hand out too. They were worlds apart now only separated by an inch of glass. George had found the mirror of Erised. Now guys, I'm not an author and I don't have the qualities to actually critique writing, but I just thought that this was so fitting and I really enjoyed reading it. With that being said guys, that was my take on what happened to George Weasley after Fred died. I genuinely enjoyed making this video guys, I really did. So as usual, please make sure to let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if there's anything else you'd like to add in, then please feel free to do so. I know plenty of you like to disagree with me, so make sure you have your voice heard. Thanks again guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.